now, moving into our featured leader section of the evening, definitely brings me great pleasure to introduce the first of our two featured and recently published readers for the evening. And the first of these is Natasha Dennerstein. So, Natasha was born in Melbourne, Australia, to a family originating in Belarus. She worked as a psychiatric nurse for over 20 years, which gave her an interesting perspective on the human condition. In 2011, she completed her master's at the IIML at Victoria University, Wellington, New Zealand. Natasha has had poetry published in Fourth Floor, Landfall, Snorkel, JAAM, Takahe, Bloom, Transfer, Red Light Lit, and several anthologies. She is currently living in San Francisco, where she is an MFA candidate in poetry at the Creative Writing Department at San Francisco State University. Her collection, Anatomize, available on the table to my right, is published by Norfolk Press, San Francisco. So please join me in welcoming Natasha. Cranium. <clears throat> Skull is to brain as pot is to stew. My skull, the superstructure upon which the parchment of my face is stretched, it supports the landscape which tells the journey that got me here. Inside my skull, that bony artifact, is the brain gifted to me by my mother's father's mother's. It encapsulates the ancient pathways and neural channels of generations of begats. It goes back to Poland and back to Minsk and back to the Palestinian brain where that cast off wife of Judah spurned by the side of the road feels biblical self-pity and cries bitter biblical tears. The pomegranate juice taste of those tears is passed to me there she dances in her skirt of shekels in praise of the God who made the flowers. O oh, skull, O oh, coconut carved, you've served me well. You've given me a Slavic prominence of cheeky cheekbones and a jaw that's articulated. It moves up and down. Zygoma, mandible, orbit, tiny workable bones, but tough. <clears throat> Ophelia remix. <laughs> I'm going out dancing tonight. I'm getting married tomorrow in the morning. I'll clutch my bridal bouquet of rue and lavender, rosebuds and regret. I've picked the spot down by the riverbank, where the weeping willow trails and washes its leaves brand new. Plant a pair of hyacinth bulbs in my eye sockets, please. Let wisteria wander up between my ribs. Plant some gladioli behind my sternum, jasmine between my tib and fib. Make sure my metacarpals clutch that bridal bouquet so pretty Drown me in my widow's weeds. I'm marrying the memory of you. Till death do us part, honey. I've kept you in my heart. I want to die your bride. Ilium, Ischium, Pubis. I'm going to drown in my pelvic girdle. Elem elementary. Even if you look at a succulent nectarine, even if it starts your mouth watering, even if you bite into it, masticate juices dripping down your chin, even if you swallow, diverting your epiglottis from trachea to esophagus like a railway boom gate train, car, train, you will not make it disappear. 
even if it makes its way down river through the dark heart of your jejunum to your duodenum, chiming in a pool of chimes squirting by peristalsis into your stomach with intestinal fortitude, the nature of nectarine remains the same. You cannot make it disappear. And even if the digested nectarine does its devilish catfish wriggle across your transverse colon and through your treacherous jungles of bowels, it will not lose its nectarinity. And even when expelled as waste and spread as manure across the fields, the seed of nectarine remains its DNA. And from the waste of your carcass, the nutrients will be sucked back into the soil. And from the swallowed seed within your waste, a nectarine tree will grow. Hemoglobin. She has lost a lot of blood. She has given a lot of blood away. She has infused her blood with pharmaceuticals. She has infused her blood with attar of roses in industrial amounts. She has sold her blood for 50 pounds sterling per pint. She has cut her thumb and bled into a stew. She has poisoned her blood. She has gotten blood poisoning. She has attended a blood wedding twice, once as a groom and once as a bride. She has excellent blood pressure, smack bang in the middle of the healthy range. She has had her blood colonized. She has leaked and oozed blood by lunar ticks. She has donated blood via a spinning machine that separates red cells from plasma centrifugally. She has eight pints of blood still, yet it is different blood to the first blood. Captured, waterproof, elastic, breathable, washable, his living coat of flesh, dermis, epidermis, subcutaneous fat. He is a human snake. He sheds his skin and grows himself a new one. He sniffs me in the mulchy woods. Fox follows rabbit me for miles, cracking twigs underfoot, ears pricked, waiting to pounce. The hunter skins his prey, peels himself off, reveals who and what he is. He tooths me, claws me, tails me, buries me in this stretchy bag. Come in. <laughs> it's informal. Come in. Come in, Jen. <laughs> oh, you're, are you hovering in the doorway? <laughs> Oh, that's okay. I'm a woman. I can multitask. I can, I can recite and chat. Color. You slough off layers of cotton, wool, reveal your burnished skin of armor glinting in the setting sun, Volkswagen hoods seen from cop chopper cam, metallic, golden to the touch. I lay expanses of my rosy skin to as much surface area of your skin as I can to skin you and let you skin me. I goose flesh when you touch me, my subway man, my Burger King prince. Heat radiates off of you. Underneath you, your engine ticks over in perfect timing as you make the sound of a cooling radiator and your neck smells of smoked hickory, your forearms of fallen magnolia petals. Seventh cranial nerve, the seventh circle of hell. Vanity is one of the seven deadly sins. He's a very good looking guy, allegedly sketchy with a punky aesthetic. He gets his septum pierced with a Frankenstein bolt, then his tragus 
it swells to twice its size due to infection contracted from the dodgy piercer. His face swells, pressure is placed on the seventh cranial nerve which controls the musculature of the face. He develops Bell's palsy, half his face paralyzed, only able to talk out of half his mouth like a gangster. One eye slackens, droops, he is a monster. You've ruined my looks, he cries, you've ruined my looks. Bitches is the title of the poem. I'm not addressing y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Bitches. Um, there's an epigraph, epigraph from Sylvia Plath that's one out of the ash I rise with my red hair and eat men like hair. Redhead. They call me passionate, my crushed garnet mane. I shake my pomegranate sangria locks and scattered with the passion of Titian particles of revenge and cinnamon resentment. The ground around me is peppered with remnants of disaffected exes. Brunette. I wreck my espresso chestnut locks with my bare fingers. Known to be intelligent and strong, I can be as vacuous as any blonde. In fact, sometimes I wish I was one. I am jet. Watch me take off. I am mahogany. Watch me grow strong in the forest. Watch me remain standing. Blonde. I trip the light fantastic in the beeline honey daylight and shiver my champagne tresses, a bird settling on a bough. I love diamonds. I give the impression of harmlessness but will set you on fire just to see the color of your light ash. Um, that's kind of a found poem. They're, they were all the um, names of hair dye colors from uh, Garnier Nutrice and L'Oreal that I lifted off the internet. Just, you know, pomegranate, chestnut, light ash. So, um, you know, I, I owe the hair dye companies for that one. And the last one I'm going to read is called Samson. It grows out of your head like vines, nasturtium and morning glory. It is a weed and clumps and tendrils. It is an extension of your nerve endings. It has a life of its own. It can be tied in a tail like a horse's. It is a bouquet of filaments. It has feelings. It predicts changes in the weather. It connects you to the earth that you came out of. It is the canopy of your tree. It is also the root system of your tree, inverted. If you cut it off, you relinquish power. If someone strokes it, you feel good inside. It serves no biological function, some people will tell you. It is given to you by God to have fun with. Do not listen to them. It is fecund, fecund enough to pelt your scalp. Thank you.